Oh, I haven't had any problems. Do you right, work? Do you... So yeah, this is okay. game number two in IBM versus Chopper Trade. After one game, uh, Chopper Trading is up uh, one game to none. And then now facing off is Arjun Tower and Azurix, however you pronounce his name. On yeah, yeah. Lost. Yeah, Chopper Trading's got some uh, players with some interesting team or interesting names. Hard to pronounce. <laughs> um, spawning in the bottom part of the map is going to be Arjun Tower, the blue Zerg player for Team IBM. And his opponent at the top of the map, a Zurix, uh, the, the pink Protoss from Chopper Trading. So we are going to have a ZVP and um, a little bit about Arjun Tower. Um, I think he's been on the, the B team for two years and now, uh, now this is his third year playing for Team IBM. And uh, a Zurix from Chopper Trading has been around for uh, a few seasons as well. So he's kind of a veteran for their team, and, and putting a pylon on the low ground, pretty standard stuff. It'll be interesting to see if he goes for the gateway or the forge. But I think a uh, pylon on the low ground usually means that it's going to be a forge opening. Um, Argent Tower not currently ranked in any leagues, but I know he's been ranked high as platinum. Um, his opponent Azurix also has not ranked or been placed in the league this uh, season. Um, but he's been as high as Diamond, so it, it, it could be a pretty pretty even matchup. Like we just as we just saw, um, yep, Huffman was able to Huffman was able to upset VD's nuts um, and take the first game. So IBM's gonna want to try and get that back to even things up here. Looks like Arjun's gonna go uh, hatch first. And do have a hatch first opening. Um, I think that's pretty standard, even against a forge fast command. Just got to be careful of cannon rushes, but there's such, there's so much uh, uh, space behind the minerals at the natural that it'd be really hard to uh, cannon rush uh, on this map. And Ardentar actually doing a good job of de delaying this na uh, expansion, and got to be careful not to lose the drone. Uh, safely gets that out of the way. But his hatchery is actually going to be about um, half finished before uh, Xerx has even really started. Um, so he's going to have that up a little bit sooner. And he's actually going for the quick third. <laughs> Three hatcheries, no spawning pool. Uh, very aggressive macro play, but why not? Um, knows that the forge opening is not going to be able to produce any units for a while. He did go gateway first, but... Um, just gotta be careful again of cannon rushes. Actually, the third on this uh, on this map, uh, where Argent Tower's hatchery is being created, like I think that's actually a little bit easier to cannon. It's a little bit tighter back there. But fortunately for Argent Tower, there is no probe even close to uh, to his hatcheries. And um, wonder if Azurix is going to scout this third. Do have one gas, uh, sir. So not super techy. Um, completely walled off here. Starting with his uh, cyber next core. Hmm. He might be going for an air, air game. Yeah, I want to see a lot. Uh, a lot of common openers could be like uh, four gate with plus one. Uh, plus one hasn't even started. So. Um, Still a lot of time, I think, before any tech routes are going to be chosen. And here comes the scout for the third. So you don't see that there is the third. Um, no gas yet for Argent Tower. So he's playing gasless defense here. Uh, fortunately, queens are good and uh, good good for defense. Um, there goes the Stargate. And it is going to be Stargate opener. So I think um, Oracles, Phoenixes, uh, are both pretty good against Zerg since there's just no anti-air other than Queens in the beginning. Um, but once he gets some Spore Crawlers out, I think um, 
it'll be fine. And you don't need the evolution chamber anymore to build spore crawlers, so that's kind of nice. But it will be really annoying if he doesn't have his overlords in the right positions and are kind of vulnerable. Right now in the worker count, 32 to 27, uh, in favor of uh, Argentower. But that might actually climb up once this uh, this thirst gets, you know, yeah, the econom eh, economy starts kicking in over there. <laughs> Can't talk today. It's just, with those oracles, the queens are still a really good defense for them. That's one of the biggest problems I find with doing the oracle harass against Zerg. Only one oracle followed up by uh, phoenixes, and Argentina does see that the stargate is there. A double stargate now. Uh, let's see what this oracle can do. There's only five drones here, and deciding not to activate uh, just yet, and see if he can get any kills here. One, two. Two drones lost so far. A third goes down, and possibly a fourth and a fifth. Wow, so getting gets him some nice kills here, but as to make sure not to lose the oracle, he unfortunately does. So. Uh, a little miss micro there. Uh, with that said and done, we're actually even, even, almost even uh, in the worker count. Uh, Argent Tower only up by uh, seven drones here. Do you have a layer and double evolution chamber? So this is pretty standard stuff from Argent Tower. Um, I think Phoenixes are good, but uh, eventually you're going to need uh, a robotics facility to deal with Hydralis if, if Argentire goes for it. Or even Zerglings for that matter. He needs a, something to take him out. Right. Uh, there's no gateway follow-up. There is a robotics facility. Um, using Really just using a Phoenix for map control. So it's going to depend a lot of the, a lot of his Phoenix control uh, to do as much damage with those uh, to buy him time to get the robotics facility and the Colossus out. So we have plus one coming up for air, and they're the Void Rays. Oh, so transitioning into Void Rays. So I think uh, Argentire should pick the Hydra list then. He does have that on the way. Uh, so that will be a good choice in dealing with this. Oh, and so many gateways getting popped up after this. This might be a two base uh, all in. Um, he's actually stopped pro production too, so uh, this could be a this could be a pretty good push uh, once all of his gates are finished. How many gates is this? Uh, Going to be eight gates. So eight gates is usually a sign of an all of it. So. Really just getting the Observer. Um, robotics Phyllis, he probably wants to get a War Prism because he doesn't really have any forward probes out there. So the only way he's going to be able to warp in is with um, Warp Prism. Right now, nine Hydralis in production, so I think it should be safe, especially because Azur Azurix has not pushed out with these Void Rays. There are a lot of Void Rays, however, and now he's getting scouting of all of this information. He is doing a little harass with those Phoenix in the bottom left. Yeah, he's able to pick off a few Overlords. Gateways are finished. Actually, he forgot to warp one at the uh, ramp. But um, looks like he's just gonna go out the back back door. Good creep spread. So he should be able to see this coming for um, unless he places the pylon, uh, forward pylon, on the very bottom right of the map. I think that's the only location where he might not see it coming. Six Void Rays, a bunch of Zealots to soak up the hits from the Hydralis. This could be a, a very strong push. We got one Colossus on the way. Thermal Lance is not finished. And we have one Colossus. Is Argent going to be able to deal with all this? Uh, only 12 Hydralis, 16 Zerglings. Uh, 
In production, 17 more Hydralis, so there's so many Hydralis here. Oh, he's gonna try and pick off these, uh, these Phoenix, um, and that'd be a nice win if you can snipe a few. Gets a couple. Gonna have to back up and... <laughs> Yeah, he's going to want to have to uh, back off here a little. He's got some roaches in production. That's a good call to help deal with the Colossus. And he's actually getting infestors. Um, That's going to be great for stopping those void rays. And if he can get the right engagement on these units, there are no force fields. Uh, really just that one Colossus... Uh, and, and six Void Rays are a lot, they're fully charged, he probably wants to wait until they're done charging, but he's going to go ahead and engage this. Uh, getting the Colossus from the back is going to be a good pickup. Uh, there's still a lot of a lot of Void Rays and Zealots here at the third though. Uh, he's going to want to have to make sure, he, try not to lose that third, that's, that's the key thing that's keeping him ahead in this game. There's so many Zealots being warped in. Um, but looking at the production, we still have ten more Hydralis and four more Roaches coming in. And no, uh, no Colossus. Uh, the one Colossus is stuck at home. So I think Argentire is actually going to be in good shape here. Uh, just has to stay calm and uh, defend his third. Uh, everything's said and done. Uh, Argentire up about 60 supply and still has a 10 worker lead. So I think he's got to be feeling pretty good right now. And Zerg's going for the third. Uh, at the back door, a little bit closer to the Zerg base, and uh, that creep actually might get up there eventually. Arjun's economy almost doubled the Protoss here. Yeah, just the fact that he, had, he didn't start that third for until very late. He had, doesn't have enough workers to even saturate him once he does finish. Um, so Arjun Tire wisely taking the fourth base there. Trying to engage, but not get surrounded. So uh, I think he's in a good shape. You'd be wise to just not engage this. I don't think. And uh, might be able to pick up some units here at the uh, the front of the ramp. I think he might end up trading these uh, these this little pack of hydros and. Uh, that's, it does oh, force a uh, photon overcharge. And that cybernetics core at 50 health. Oh my god. You can still snipe it. Uh, he just turned around and sniped it. Um, but there is 27. Oh, is he going to pick it off? <laughs> oh, 27 no. health. <laughs> yeah. He grabbed the third though. So, I mean, he took out the third. Oh, he did force uh, Xerix to to move his army away, so this is that's a really big win. Around the 20 minute mark is when the uh, Zergs will be probably fully mined out at his main base. Um, so he's going to be playing two base against three base Zerg basically um, for a big portion of this game. This strategy here though of blocking off the natural and creating a smaller ramp right near his third is actually it's kind of good because he creates a smaller funnel for any Zerg units and he doesn't really have to worry about his natural too much. Oh, we have units moving across the map. Can he get down some fungal growth? He does fungal growth the army. Um, if he can keep fungal growing, I think he'll be in really good shape to clean this all up. And um, now all that remains is that one Colossus in back. The sentries are, are immobilized. And uh, Argentine are looking in great shape. Triple the uh, supply and takes the game. Um, IBM gets the point and will go 1-1 into game three.